from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Data Science for All. Brought to you by IBM. Science for All, this is uh, IBM's event here on the west side of Manhattan, here on theCUBE, you're live. We'll be here all day, along with Dave Vellante. I'm John Walls, poor Dave had to put up with all that howling music at this hotel last night. Kept them up till all hours. <laughs> Lots of fun here in the, in yeah, the city. Oh, yeah. Crazies out last night. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the, the headphones, they work for you. Glad to hear that, yeah. <laughs> People are already dressed for Halloween, you know. The, yes. <laughs> in New York, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. all, 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 <laughs> all year, the time, yeah. Yeah, all year. 365. Yeah, we have with us now the uh, head of data science and a VP at Galvanize, Nir Caldero, and uh, Nir, good to see you, sir. Thanks for being with us, we appreciate the time. Well, of course, my pleasure. Tell us about Galvanize. Uh, I know you're heavily involved in education uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, tech community, but you've got corporate clients, you've got academic clients, you cover the waterfront. Uh, and I know data science is your baby. Right. But tell us a little bit about Galvanize and, and your mission there. Sure, so um, Galvanize is the learning community for technology. We provide training in data science, data engineering and also modern software engineering. Um, we recently have a, we built a very large, fast growing enterprise corporate training department uh, where we basically help companies become digital, become um, nimble and also very data driven so they can actually go through this digital transformation and survive in this fourth industrial revolution. Uh, we do it across all layers of the business, from the executives uh, to managers um, to data scientists and data analysts, and kind of like transform and upskill all current um, um, skills to to be modern, to be digital, so companies can actually go through this transformation. So you, you, pretty you quickly. Talk, you hit on one of those items that you talked about, data driven. Right. Um, it seems like a no-brainer, right? The, the more information yep. you give me the more uh, um, uh, analysis I can apply to it, the more I can put it into my business practice, the more money I make, the more my customers are happy. It's a layup, right? It is. What is a data-driven organization then? Like, what, what, why do you have to, or do you have to convince people that this is where they need to be today? Sometimes I need to convince them, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, so let's back up a little bit. We are the midst of the fourth industrial revolution, and in order to survive in this, uh, fourth industrial revolution companies need to um, become nimble, as I said, mm -hmm. become agile, but most importantly, become data driven. So the organization can actually best respond to all the predictions that are coming from these very sophisticated machine intelligence models. Um, if the organization immediately can best respond to all of that, companies will be able to enhance their user experience, mm -hmm. and get insight about their customers, enhance performances, and et cetera. And we know that the winners in this um, revolution, in this era, will be companies who are very digital, mm -hmm. that master the skills of becoming a data-driven organization. Mm -hmm. And you know, we can talk about more about the transformation and what it consisted of. Um, do you want me to? Sure. Can yeah. I just I'll actually ask you a question? Sure. Yeah, right. uh, the, this fourth uh, wave, uh, mm -hmm. is the, this is what, the, the cognitive machine wave, or how, how would the, you describe some it? Some people call it artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. I think artificial intelligence is like big data, kind of like mm -hmm. buzzword. I think more appropriately, we should call it machine intelligence, um, industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay, that we already I got a lot of undergo. questions, but, right, right, but right. carry on. Right, right. Uh, well, but, but so, I mean, hit on that, so you, you see that as being a, a major era. It's a game changer. If you will, yeah. not just a chapter, but a, a major game changer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why well, so? so? So, okay, I'll jump in again. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. Machines have always replaced man. Yeah, automation, people. right. And mm -hmm. um, certainly does. To some big extent. Theme, big, big, but, but certain machines have replaced play certain human tasks, let's say that. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, for the first time in history, this fourth era, m machines are replacing humans with cognitive mm -hmm. tasks. Um, so, and that scares a lot of people. It is. Because you look at the United States, the median income of U.S. worker has dropped since 1999 from 55,000 down to 52,000. And a lot of right. people believe it's sort of the hollowing out of that factor that we just mentioned. Education, many believe, is, is the answer. You know, Galvanize Correct. is an organization Correct. Uh, that plays a critical role mm -hmm. in helping deal with that problem, does it not? Right. So, as Mark Zuckerberg says, 
there is a lot of like hate love relationship with AI. Yeah. People love it on one side because they are excited about all the opportunities that can come from this, um, you know, utilization of machine intelligence. But many people are actually afraid from it. Mm -hmm. uh, I read a survey. Um, few weeks ago that says that 36% of population thinks that um, AI will destroy humanity and will conquer the world. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, that's, that's a fact that what people think. Uh, if I think it's going to happen, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I highly believe that education is one of the pillars that can address this fear for machine intelligence. And you spoke a lot about jobs. I can talk about it forever. Mm -hmm. But just my belief is that machine can actually replace some of our responsibilities, right? And not necessarily takes and replace the entire job. Let's talk about lawyers, right? Lawyers currently spend between 40 to 60% of the time writing contracts mm -hmm. uh, or looking at previous cases. Mm -hmm. The machine can write a contract in two minutes or look up at millions of data points of previous cases in zero time. Why a lawyer today needs to spend 40 to 60% of the time on that? Billable hours, um, that's why. It, it is. <laughs> so I don't think the machine will replace the, the job of the lawyer. I think in the future, um, the machine will replace some of responsibilities like auditing or writing contracts, or looking at um, previous cases. Menial labor, if you will. Yes, but yeah. you know, for example, the machine is not that great right now with negotiation skills. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the future, the, l the job of the lawyer will be mostly around negotiation skills rather than you know writing contracts and etc. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're absolutely right. There is a big fear in the market right now uh, among executives, among people in the public. I think we should educate people about what is the true implications of machine intelligence um, in this fourth industrial revolution and era. And education is definitely one of that. Well, and uh, one of my favorite stories when people bring up this topic is when Gary Kasparov lost to the IBM supercomputer, Blue Gene, or whatever mm -hmm. it was called. Yeah. Instead of sort of giving up, uh, what he said is he started a competition where he proved that humans and machines could beat the IBM supercomputer. So that to this day, has a competition where the best chess player in the world is a combination of humans and machines. And so. Right. It's that creativity. Um, imagination. Imagination, right. Combinatorial effects yeah. of different technologies mm -hmm. yeah. that education yeah. hopefully can help yeah. people so see the way. Look, I'm a big fan of neuroscience. I, I wish I did my PhD in neuroscience, mm -hmm. but we are very, very far away from understanding how our brain works. Now, to try to imitate the brain when we don't know how the brain works, <laughs> we are very far away from being in a place where a machine can actually replicate and you know really best respond like a human uh, we don't know how our brain works um, yet so we need to do lots of research on that before we actually really write uh, very strong powerful machine intelligence models that can actually replace us as humans mm -hmm. and outbeat us um, not you know we spoke about we can speak about jeopardy in Watson we can speak about you know AlphaGo um, you know that uh, it's, a Google, it's a Google company that kind of like uh, outperformed the, the, the world champion. These are very specific tasks, right? Um, again, like the lawyer, the machine can write beautiful contracts with NLP. Um, machine can look at millions of trillions of data and figure out what's the conclusion there, right? Or summarize text very fast, but not necessarily good in negotiation yet. Mm -hmm. So. So when you think about a digital business, you know, to us, a digital business is a business that uses data to differentiate and serve customers and right. maintain customers. Mm -hmm. um, so when you talk about data-driven, it strikes me that when everybody's saying you know, digital business, digital transformation, it's about a data transformation, how well they u utilize data. Uh, and if you look at the bell curve of organizations, most are not, they, everybody wants to be data-driven, many mm -hmm. say they are data-driven. Right. Would you agree most are not? So, um, I will agree that most of companies says that they are data driven, but they are truly not. Um, I work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies uh, on a daily basis. I meet their executives and you know functional leaders and actually see their data and business problems that they have. Most of them do tend to say that they are data driven, but truly, if you just ask them if they put data and, and decision at the same place, every time they have to make a decision, they don't do it. It's a habit that they don't yet have. Uh, companies need to start investing in building what we say a healthy data culture in order to 
enable and become data driven. Part of it is you know democratization of data, right? Currently, what I see is lots of organization actually. Um, open the data just for the analysts or the marketers, or people who kind of like make decisions, that needs to make decisions with data, mm -hmm. but not throughout the entire organization. You know, I always say that everyone in the organization makes decisions on a daily basis from the barista to the CEO, mm -hmm. right? And the entire idea of becoming data driven um, is that data can actually help us make better decisions on a daily basis. So how about democratizing the data to everyone? So everyone from the barista to the CEO can actually make better decision on a daily basis. And companies don't excel yet in doing it. Not every company is digital as Amazon. Amazon, I think, is actually one of the uh, most digital companies in the world, if you look at the digital index. Uh, not everyone is Google or Facebook. Um, most companies want to be there. Most companies understand that they will not be able to survive in this era if they will not become data driven. Yeah. Um, so it's a big problem. Um, we tried Galvanize to address this problem from um, executive type of education, uh, where we actually meet with the C-level executive in companies and actually guide them through how to write their data strategy, mm -hmm. how to think about um, prioritizing data investment um, to actual implementation of that. Mm -hmm. And so far, we are highly successful. We, was, we were able to make big transformation in a very large, important organizations. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually very proud of it. How, how long is, are these eras? Is it a, a century or more? This fourth industrial era? Yeah. Well, it's hard to predict that, and I'm not a machine. It, <laughs> or <but> what's on <laughs> 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 um, But certainly more but than 50 years, would you say? Or maybe um, not, I don't know. I actually don't think so. I think it's going to be fast, and we're going to move to the next one pretty soon that will be even more, with more intelligence, with more data. Huh. Um, so the know, reason I ask is there was an article I saw on LinkedIn, I didn't have time to read it, but it, was, it talked about the four horsemen, Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Apple, mm -hmm. and it said they will all be out of business in 50 years. Now, I don't know, I think Apple probably has 50 years of cash flow in the, in the, <laughs> right. in the bank, but, <laughs> but, but then they said the one if they had, the author said, if I had to predict one that would survive, it would be Amazon, to your point, because they're so data-driven. Yeah. And his, the premise, again, I didn't yeah. read the whole thing, was that some new data-driven, digital you know, upstart will disrupt them. Yeah, and you know, companies like Amazon and you know, Alibaba lately, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that's right, kind of like, is a co in competition with Amazon about who is becoming more data-driven, mm -hmm. with utilizing more machine intelligence are the one that invested you know, in these capabilities many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. It's not that they started investing last year or yeah. five years ago. We speak about 15 and 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So companies who were really a pioneer and, um, and invested very early on will predict actually to survive in the future and you know, very much aligned. Yeah, I wanted to uh, touch on something that might be a bridge too far, uh, I don't know, but you talk about, uh, and Dave brought it up, about replacing human capital, right, because of artificial intelligence. Yep. Is, is there a reluctance, perhaps, on, a, on behalf of executives to embrace that because they, they are concerned about their own I agree. Place because uh, you, you might be in the room with me. You <laughs> might, okay, <laughs> that you provide data, but you also provide the capability to analyze and make the best informed decision, and therefore eliminate it is. the human element of a C-suite executive that um, maybe they're not as necessary today or tomorrow as they were two years ago. So it is absolutely true and there is a lot of fear in the room, especially when I show them robots, they freak out typically. <laughs> um, but the fact is well known. Leaders who will not embrace these skills and understanding and will help orga their organization to become agile, nimble, and data-driven will not survive. They will be replaced. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, they afraid from it on the on the other side they see that they, you know if they will not actually do something and take an action today they might going to be replaced in the future right. where should organizations start hey i want to be data driven where, that's a, that's where do a i good start question so um, data data science machine learning is a top down initiative it requires a lot of funding mm -hmm. it requires um, change in culture and habits mm -hmm. so it has to start from the top 
it has to, the journey has to start from executive, from educating executive about what is data science, what is machine learning, how to prioritize investments in this field, um, how to build data-driven culture, right? When we speak about data-driven, we mainly speak about the culture aspect here, mm -hmm. not specifically about the technical side of it. Um, so, it has to come from the top. Leaders has to anchor that in the organization. Uh, they have to give authority and power for people. They have to put the funding um, at first. Mm -hmm. And then you see, this is, this is how it's beautiful that you actually see it trickles down to the organization when you have a very powerful CEO that make a decision, you know, and move the organization quickly to become data driven, make executive look at data every time they make a decision, get them into the habit. When people, you know, look up to executives, they try to do the same. And if my boss is an example for me, someone who is looking at data every time he has to make decisions, ask the right questions, know how to prioritize, um, set the right goals for me, this helps me and helps the organization um, better perform. Follow the leader. Yep. Right? Follow yep. the leader. Yeah, follow the leader. Nir, thanks for being with us. Of course, uh, my pleasure. This interesting love hate thing that we have yeah, going there is. on. Got and a we love. should address that. Right, right. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> next segment. How about next that? Time. Nir Kader from Galvanize joining us here live on theCUBE. Back with more from New York in just a bit.